We went into a little bit of Tim Hardaway Jr. earlier. Talk a little bit about THJ's future or lack thereof in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So his season obviously got cut short this year. He played in 42 games uh, right after getting a big contract. Uh, he took less money, actually, to stay with Dallas, about $17 million less to stay with Dallas than to go play in New Orleans with Zion. And so that was pretty nice. He certainly didn't have to do that. But he worked like hell trying to get back for this playoff run. And, you know, you were seeing every game day Mavericks PR saying, like, he's listed as out. It is out. Listed as out. But the fact that they were still doing that game after game says, like, he was actively trying to get there. And would they have really, could they have really used his shooting off the bench in particular in even the Golden State series? Absolutely. He would absolutely he would have been desperate. Absolutely. Not only that, just depth too. Like think about yeah. that. Like the team With another body. Fast. Yeah. Give another guy that can shoot 40% right. from three off yes. the bench. Now, yes. what kind of conditioning he would be in? Probably not great, but at the same time, hey, can you give us 10 minutes and like two threes? I'll take it. I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Yeah. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been great to to have him. He's a 13.9 points per game for his career, 35.8% mm -hmm. from three. And mm -hmm. uh, in Dallas, in his three and a half seasons, he's averaged 15 and a half points. He's also three, seen his three-point percentage climb. Uh, he was about 34.7% uh, his last season with New York. And then his first full season with Dallas, he was just a hair under 40%, and then 39% in the 2020-2021. Uh, he did drop this year but again you had a whole coaching staff shake up in the rotation shake up and then he only played like half the year so his numbers did dip a little bit this year um about 14 points roughly and i think he was like 33 34 again this year but if you look at his overall body of work in dallas you're like okay he's a very solid role player he's always been a quality number three option and last year in the playoffs he was your second best player he was Filling it in the playoffs last year, just his percentages. Like everyone not named Luca in game seven, he imploded. Him and KP were combined like one of 12 from three in game seven at the Clippers last year. But it's still a situation where it's like, yeah, he can definitely bring something to this team that's needed. But now that we know Brunson's got this new deal coming in, things are complicated. Now, He's due 19.6 million next year. That's for what his value is and where we felt like it was when he signed his new deal with Dallas. That's not bad, but for what the changing landscape is, the Dallas Mavericks did not see Brunson be this this year. They're glad as hell he is, but they didn't see this. And so I mm -hmm. think the, the landscape is a little unsteady now. And so you're going to have to see them make some moves. They're not going to be able to keep just drop Brunson's fat contract on here and be like, all right, everything else can be the same. They're not going to be able to do that. They're going to have to probably move Bertans somehow. They're going to have to try to move Dinwiddie. Hopefully they can flee someone with the fact that uh, Dinwiddie woke up the last couple games, at least of the season. But I don't know. Uh, both of those guys have multi-year deals remaining. So moving them might prove tough. Hardaway obviously has multiple years as well, but I could see feasibly a scenario where Hardaway could be, uh, the odd man out because he is still a defensive liability. He's at best an average defender and he's not a creator for others. Dinwiddie might not always be consistent, but at the very least he can work with the ball and he can make things happen. He can create chaos and set up his teammates. Hardaway, he can go get his own shot, but he's not creating for other guys. So the defensive liability um, the, the inability to create for others, I feel like that might put him in a difficult spot. Obviously, with uh, Reggie and with Dorian Finney-Smith, your 3 and D guys are always going to beat your just three guy. So I think, I think there's a chance he's still here next year, if they, depending on what they figure out. But I also think there is a good chance that if the Mavericks do pull up some kind of trade, he's going to be part of it, if for no other reason than figuring out a way to make the cap the money work. I think his role reduced to this year, while his numbers might have bumped back up over the course of a year, I think just a situation where 
he's not going to be able to be as his same trigger happy self and enjoy the same success he did during those couple of years they were down and KP wasn't really being the true number two they thought he would be. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to just tell you right now, DDP, you're killing it tonight. You're killing it, it tonight. <laughs> like you are killing it. Like that breakdown you just gave me of Tim Hardaway Jr. I don't know what else. I don't know what to say. Um, I'm full agreement. Like everything you broke down to the very last compound and what that's saying, mm -hmm. I agree with it, especially with the Dinwiddie thing about Dinwiddie being able to create off the dribble where Tim Hardaway can't. Right. And that's where you could see the scenario where you could see a Hardaway Jr. going into a trade scenario and you keeping a Dinwiddie because Dinwiddie can, it's not that Dinwiddie may be a more uh, expensive offensive player. Mm -hmm. because Tim Hardaway Jr. can basically probably get you more points, but he's not creating for anybody else. Right. You're just opening shots for him. Dinwiddie can do multiple things, and that's where the allure for even pulling him from another squad to Dallas right. because they needed another playmaker, and that's what Denny, Dinwiddie can do. And I agree with you with the fact of, he was on what we call the land of juices and berries with Rick, with uh, Rick Carlisle. Yeah. You might not have the land of juices and berries with, with Jason Kidd right. and be able to shoot the ball all day. You know what I'm saying? So the dynamic may be different. So I can under I can see where he, feeling what you're saying. He could be moved because he's more of an appeal mm. for a team if you move him because of what he can offer as far as the shooting aspect, you get right. what I'm saying? Where Dinwiddie, if you say, oh, well, let's put Dinwiddie in the deal. People say, I, I don't want Dinwiddie. You know what I mean? Because shooters are a premium in the league. Right. Shooters are premium in the NBA. Dinwiddie is not that shooter that Tim Hardaway Jr. is. So he's more of a premium player that when you get a, a guy that can shoot the ball, I mean, just like you said, with the percentage goals, I mean, the percentage came up when he came over to Dallas. Mm -hmm. It was near 40% teetering. He is, he can't shoot the ball. So that's going to be a lure for teams. Whereas a Dinwiddie, you can say, we can get somebody who can create plays and they can't really shoot. We can get somebody to do that. We need somebody who can score the ball. Yep. So I understand where you're coming from in that. And that's where I think a Hardaway Jr. could be moved and thrown in a deal. I would love for him to come back because of what he can offer for Dallas. But I can also say, I don't mind you leaving in a scenario in a trade if you can bring something back, especially if you can get an athletic big man, if you throw him in a trade, Hardaway yeah. Jr., and you can bring an athletic big man back to help the team. I'm all for that. Well, look at it this way. If you can, let's say you could hypothetically put a deal together that would ship out Hardaway and Bertans. Do you know how much money you would save just doing that, just talking one season, how much cap space would open up? Talk to me. $35.6 million. Ah, bye. Hardaway is $19.6 million due next year. Bertans, bye. Bertans is $16 million. By bye. the way, Bertans signed a five-year $80 million contract. This was year two. He's got bye. three more years after See this. You. See you. Yeah. So Bertans, <laughs> if you're talking about how you're going to make Jalen work, it's got to be See Bertans. You. Don't know how. Don't know how you're moving that contract. but. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can put something together. You know, maybe hell, get New creative. Orleans, Please Orleans, get creative over an area. Yeah? New Orleans was willing to pay an extra $17 million to try and pry Hardaway away. Kick the right. tires. See if they'll consider it. Now they have a good squad. They might think, hey, this would be we, really good. We need a shooter. Guy. We need that exactly. one shooter away. Exactly. So, yeah. You might yep. be able to make something happen there. Now, I yep. don't, uh, to be honest, I know they were a playoff team this year. I know that they gave Phoenix some trouble in that first round series. And they need I, a shooter, DDP. I haven't looked because at their they roster to men. really know, like, hey, what do I want on there? Like, what's my wish list of their they roster? They need a shooter. Well, yeah, I know. I'm talking about, like, what we would get in return oh, from Oh, okay, them. okay, okay, um, okay. I don't know. I, I Admittedly, I don't know what their roster would offer us in return, but that's an option if you want to talk about, like, where Hardaway could go. Right. Um, so there's there's something there. And if they need shooters, hell, Davis Berton is the ultimate streaky shooter. So is Hardaway. Like, we talk about Dinwiddie being inconsistent. Hardaway, uh, my... My friend, Innie, who's been on here a ton with me over the years doing uh -huh, these shows, uh -huh, uh 
Uh -huh. uh, he likes to say Tim Hardaway Jr. is ignorant. Just basically, like, <laughs> do doesn't matter if he's 0 for 100. He's taking the he next, keep 10, shooting. The next yes. 10 in a row he believing he's going to make it. He'll pull he up from 40 feet care. if he feels like he's got to look at it. Like, he does not 100. care. 100. But at the same time, when he's hot, it's, it's scorching. It's, it, it is unstoppable. But when he's not, ooh, he'll give you some 2 for 17 night. Like, Definitely he will. We've it, seen it. Yes, and that's why I still say Dinwiddie might be the better option, mostly mm -hmm. because Dinwiddie is a little bit better of a defender, not a great defender, but a little bit better of a defender, and he can still create for others. If Even if he's not hitting shots, yeah, we talked about him hunting his own shots at times in the playoffs, but I still think he's someone who, at least to some extent, will recognize, all right, I'm not really having it this game. And he I'll, show, st he, I'll still take my shots if they're there, but I'll at least look for others. Hardaway's like, I do one thing. I'm on the floor. I, I shoot. shoot. You told me the ball, I'm shooting. Yes. Every time. Yep. I agree ball with you with whatever. the dim with it. Yep. I agree with you with the dim with thing because you could even see it in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. When he was playing his game and he missed a couple of shots, he was like, okay, let me, I'll miss a couple. Let me create for my players. Let me get them involved and let me try to, you know, you could see him trying to feel his way through the game. And that's what I like about Dinwiddie. Even though he was not making this shot, I still like how he has a feel for the game where he's like, mm, I, I missed a couple. Let me get it over here. I just like the creativity that he brings to the table. And I don't feel like he's going to be in a funk like that, especially you got him. You got him toward the end of the year, right? Yeah. Let him have 23 a full games season. in the regular 23 season. games. Let him have a full off season with the Mavericks. And I think he's better. Yeah, he could be. And it's also two years at that point removed from the ACL. So right. actually this was year two from the ACL. So it right. would be three years. So maybe like he would it. be better. Let's he keep would, him. I think let's he would be Dinwiddie. 30, I think at that point. Yeah, let's um, keep Dinwiddie. Yeah. And not only that, uh, the best thing Dinwiddie can do is he can get to the cup at, at will. Right. He can always get to the rim. Now, whether or not he's converting, that's a different question. But he's, and he has good We size. talk about you get to the cup, you're going to create chaos for the defense. You're going to break mm -hmm. them down every time. Always got those corner threes. You always got the skip pass and all of that. Hardaway doesn't do that. Hardaway off the dribble is a pull-up mid-ranger. Now, he's good right. at them. He is good at them, but it's a different type of pressure. Hardaway, it's feast or famine. Hardaway is one to two dribbles, not a whole lot of attacking the rim. Dinwiddie can get all the way there. And I think your three guard lineup with Luca Brunson and Dinwiddie was so lethal when deployed, granted in small doses, small stretches here and there. And to be fair, we didn't get to see an unleashed Jalen Brunson in that combo with Luca and Hardaway, but it's hard to fathom. It would be much more effective. Than I feel like Hardaway would be a, a perfect spot up option for this team, but the cap situation, not his fault at all. You get the money you're offered that you earned. Absolutely. But I feel like the scenario, given his caps figure and what this team has to still try to cobble together, they've said they're not going to run it back. They're going to be aggressive. Nico Harrison said that right after the season ended. And I'm willing to put a little more trust in him than I did in previous regimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, just get the feeling that Hardaway is going to be on the cut cutting block because of the pieces they could move, he's kind of the most appealing one, I feel like, the most consistently proven one, just yep. because people can look at, hey, look at his last three years. What's he done? Whereas Dinwiddie had a stretch of about 30 games by the time the Mavericks got him, which was kind of his reclamation project. And even within that 30 games, he had some real duds. Kind of hard to sell someone on, hey, Dinwiddie's fully back, and he is this guy. He Nobody's is taking Dinwiddie contender. and no deals. I I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. Right, if you're looking at the viability of him versus Hardaway, it's easier to convince them of Hardaway, I think. Right. And that's a big contract you can move. And maybe you could even pair something where you can also move Bertans and like, hey, look, you got two shooters. Ah, here you go. Uh, and then you open some stuff up for you to make some other moves. I don't know. But that, that will be the fun. Uh, Hardaway's been good for Dallas. I thought he could have, even though it's a totally different style of play, I thought he could have a Monte Ellis type impact on this offense. And I think at times he did. There were times where he could take over a game similarly, but I think uh, ultimately just not going to align with them as they take that next step. I don't think he necessarily fits the role, which shows you just how close it is. Because if he had come back during this playoff run, I think Dallas could have gone all the way. I really do. If he had somehow gotten back, let's say a week earlier, I think Dallas could have crawled back into this series. 
Now that's assuming he's able to give them 10, 12 minutes a night and knock down two or three threes in a game, you know, like just be a pure spot up option if anything else. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I think ultimately the lack of depth and firepower because of the lack of depth is what caught them. And I think if they had had him, it could have been a very different story for his end Dallas, his run in Dallas. But 